How you doing, Steve? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good. Can you hear us okay? Yep. All right. Steve, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's appreciate good to have you. Appreciate you I'm being glad here. to be here. Yeah, appreciate it, man. So, Steve, you live out in eastern Washington. Is that correct? That's correct. And um, basically kind of around Walla Walla, we'll say. Blue Mountain area, right? Yeah, yeah, in Walla Walla. Right. Walla Walla. So Brian and I have been out to that to that way uh, a couple of times. We've been in the Blue Mountains yeah. actually doing a couple of videos. Oh, nice. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. A couple of times, yeah. Yeah, so um, like I told you, we used to come out there for work and stuff. So, you know, a couple couple areas out there. So it's nice to meet you and uh, everything. So you had, your, you had a Bigfoot encounter. Was that in the Blue Mountains there? Yes, it was. It was. Uh, they call it the Tollgate area. Uh, uh, it's kind of. It's south of. Uh, kind of southeast of Milton Freewater, Oregon. We yeah, know exactly where that's at, Steve. We were there. That's where we shot a little video, actually, just just mm -hmm. up around Tollgate there. And they've got a new uh, restaurant going on there in the Tollgate store, don't they? Have you been there yet? I haven't been there yet, but I've heard that it's pretty good. Yeah. They're serving steaks and yeah, kind of high good. quality stuff, and yeah, yeah, have a bar going on. So that's kind of cool. I've well, I've stopped up there a couple of times, and it's been open one time I've been there, but you know, four or five handful of times I've been there, um, it's always just been closed down. But then I think some people bought it, opened it up, and started doing this restaurant and kind of thing, and that's that's pretty cool. So yeah. So when did your when did you say again your your um, encounter happened? Yeah, uh, I believe it was fall of 1990. Okay. Okay. Well, why don't you tell us what was going on, what you were doing, and what well, to you. my wife and I were at a cabin up in the Tollgate area. It was actually across the highway from the uh, Spout Springs ski area up there, and. Uh, it was an A-frame cabin, so the back side of it was all glass, opened up to a, a nice deck. It had spotlights outside and stuff. And so we were standing out there, and we heard this yell. And we looked at each other, and we said, that's not a cougar. That's not a bobcat. It's like, what else would make that noise? Well... It was a couple minutes later, and we heard it again, and it was closer. And we're like, that's moving an awful fast, because that was, you can tell it was off in the distance. And it just started coming to where uh, it was getting closer, and it yelled again. And it's like, that's really close. And so... We were just kind of, we were trying to go through, okay, what animal would make that noise? And, okay, there's co there's cougars up Tollgate. There's black bears up Tollgate. There's bobcats in the Blue Mountains. That's pretty much it that we thought could make the noise. Well, as we were standing there, we heard it again, and it was a ride across the highway at the ski resort. And we're like, uh, that's across the highway. So we went inside. I shut the door. We sat on the couch and I was looking and it was facing the glass wall. And I just watched. My wife actually, out of all things, fell asleep. And I'm looking out the window or I'm looking out the glass wall. And I see this movement past the pass out past the deck and there was a uh, a log out there that was crossed like a uh, like a little gully or something that where the water would rush off and stuff from the area and it walked behind that log it stopped and it turned and looked right right at me through the glass 
and I'm standing and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm trying to wake my wife up, but I can't move. I'm frozen. I can't talk. I'm just, I'm just completely frozen. It's like, I don't want to move. I don't want this thing to see me move. And I can see the outline of it and I can see the head, the shoulders, and then the log was in, in this place. And then I can see the hands and the hips and the legs below the log. And I'm like, and that is huge, whatever it is. And so at the meantime, before it showed up, there's a couple cabins up there, and, and one of the cabins had a Rottweiler and a German Shepherd. And both of them were barking all night long. But when this thing came across the street or across the highway and it yelled, they went dead silent. And it's like, wait a minute, those dogs quit barking. And they've been barking all night. And so I'm sitting there, and it's looking in at me. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, what the hell? I can't move. I can't talk. I can't do anything. And pretty soon, it turned and walked off. And, and maybe five minutes after it walked off, after it turned and walked away, the dog started barking again. And it was like, wait a minute, those dogs are barking again. That whatever was here scared the dogs bad enough or whatever that they didn't make a noise while it was there. And finally, I woke up my wife after I got myself kind of together. And I woke her up and I said, something big was just out there. And I don't know how to explain it. And so... We stayed up longer trying to, you know, see if it was going to come back or nothing happened. So we woke up the next morning and we went out and looked. Now I'm six foot. And we went out and fit. I, we saw where it had stood. The grass was uh, pressed down uh, and everything. And so I stood where it stood. The log that was laying on the ground was above you could not see my head above it so i was thinking okay i'm almost six foot i can see part of its chest its shoulders and its head above that log so i took my hand and kind of reached up and i'm thinking okay i'm six foot this thing had to be in almost eight feet to nine feet tall and i told my wife and she's like do you think you saw what it sounds like you saw and i'm like it had to have been there's no other explanation that could explain what i saw and i said it was it was hairy i mean the light was bright enough and it was a full moon and so I can I can see that it was fur or hair or whatever you want to call it and and it just looked at me and I it, I can't explain it I froze and I'll never forget it and in 2019 a car ran me off on the highway on my motorbike and I've got traumatic brain injury from that accident and I've lost a lot of memory but even after that of losing a lot of my memory that still stands out perfect like I saw it yesterday and we've gone back up in the mountains and stuff several times and and just kind of you know hoped that oh we'll see it again maybe or and but it, it's you see it one and it changes you, you know, I've always believed that, okay, it could exist. It's, you know, it's possible. We went backpacking up in the, up in the Colgate area, up in, in the Wallowa mountains area. 
a lot and we never saw uh bear carcasses or bear anything when we went backpacking you never see a lot of cougar uh bodies around you know they're up there you know there's bears up there but you never see them or you see them off in the distance and it's like why couldn't this exist and as big as it was it's like it wasn't a bear standing on its hind legs looking at me i go it was standing upright and walking upright and so it changed me and I 100% believer. It changed my wife into a 100% believer. We always figured it could it could be real, but never 100% said, okay, yes, it is. And and so it was just you know something so real that happened. And so we also have uh, oh. Uh, Paul Freeman, uh, that is known for researching uh, the Blue Mountains for Bigfoot. Uh, I've got a book of his that his son uh, put together of what his dad uh, recorded, what his dad had written, put up all his notes and all of his stuff into a book. And I got that. And then my wife and kids bought me this. It's a bronze uh, footprint of one of the Paul Freeman uh, prints that he gathered over the years. And so, and I made a little little box to fit in so I, I can mount it on my wall. But it's like, you, you can't not believe. They got footprints, tons of them. I remember one year our kids were little and it was kind of, I think it was in a January and I don't know what year it was. Um, they had tracks through a farmer's field up in M Mill Creek out of Walla Walla. They followed the footprints up into the uh, uh, Mill Creek almost to town. And then they followed the uh, footprints, I believe it was eight miles back up into the mountains before they lost, uh, the, pr uh, lost the prints. And the ground was partially frozen. And the footprints were about two and a half to three inches deep it, it, through this whole field, through the whole pathway. And we took our kids up there and... and we looked at the footprints because there was people all over. They had, uh, oh, the the professor from, uh, I think it's Oregon or Idaho uh, uh, University. Jeff, uh, Jeff Meldrum. Jeff Meldrum. They, he even came. They had him down and a couple other uh, scientists came down. And they were the ones that followed the footprints and and stuff. And so they were they were here during that time. And so it, it's I've gone up Mill Creek a couple times by myself, and there's noises up there that it's like, okay, these noises are odd. They're not the normal mountain noises that you would hear. And I believe I heard a couple knocks, the wood knocks and stuff um years after that so yeah it's it was impressive that that night with my wife at the cabin i'll never forget it so i have to ask how far away from the window did you think this creature was when he was looking back at you okay from from the uh, okay from the from the side of the house or the cabin on the deck was maybe eight feet and then he was probably another it was probably another eight or six feet past maybe 10 feet past that so it was so probably a total of uh i'd say around 20 feet maybe that's still pretty close 
Yeah, did you get a good look at his face? Could you describe anything about it? That's the. It was. It was dark, and it was a dark. I would say a dark fur, a dark, a dark brown, a maybe a blackish brown color. Um. Uh, I just remember the eyes, the eye glare from the light. And 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 knowing that it was looking in, that that's I I think I just kind of blacked out and just stared at it, and just like, please don't come to the glass wall. <laughs> right. Stay, stay yeah, out there. <laughs> stay out there. I'll stay in here and I won't move. <laughs> Well, yeah, you mentioned so, that you couldn't or didn't move for a, a little. No, bit. I, I was, I was frozen. I, was it I, because I, of fear, or was it, you think he kind of put some kind of like uh, infrasound at you or something like that? Was there no, I think it was probably more fear of don't move, don't let it, don't move to where maybe it doesn't really notice you. Type main mind thought of you know if he sees me moving maybe that will attract him so i'll just you know just the fear i think it was mainly just fear so the next day when you went over there across the road did uh, i know it was the 90s and there was no cell phones at the time did you have a camera yeah. yeah did you have no we didn't have a camera uh or anything um yeah, if it was nowadays, I have my camera with me. Right. I would have been, I would have been taking pictures of where it stood, so you can see the, you know, the the grass being uh, pressed down where it stood and and stuff. But uh, yeah, at that time we didn't have didn't have cell phones with cameras. No, not then. <laughs> well, yeah, people talk about Oregon, you know, in the Pacific Northwest being the Bigfoot territory, and it is. But yes, if you look at Eastern Oregon. You'd probably think, oh no, I got to go more toward the coast. But the Blue Mountains have a lot of sightings and a lot of activity going on, probably just as much as yes. you in the Cascade Range. I'm well, yeah, because in or in Oregon, you still have the part of the Rocky Mountains. I mean, the Blue Mountains is is a part of the Rocky Mountain Range, kind of going through Idaho, corner the corner of Washington down into Oregon and so forth that there's 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 a lot of activity in the eastern northern eastern part of Oregon through Washington and Idaho I know of that you know it just it's unbelievable that you know why can't something exist and we don't know much about it when there's so much land that is that is closed off paul freeman used to work for i believe the city or the county of walla walla working in the watershed which is off limits to everybody and he would go uh, part of his job was uh, going through the watershed on the trails and that's where he saw a lot of them but now there's I've, just, there's just we, so my much. wife, he worked as a, a, a butcher for a while and he worked at the store that my wife was managing and he would tell her he has map, he has maps that he has the dates, the time of year and where he saw and how many he saw. And he used to tell my wife that. He had a, a a big dog. I I'm not I'm not sure what dog. I believe it was like a a Makita or something like that type of dog. That it was big, a good sized dog. And he said one time he was up there, and they heard a noise. His his dog took off running and went under his car, and got stuck. He was too he. It was too narrow for the dog, but it worked its way under there that he had to dig some of the dirt out to be able to get the dog back out. And he said the and the only times he would see um, Sasquatch 
or he 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 saw uh he told uh, told my wife that at one time that it was a family that um there was a, a small one and two bigger ones and and he kind of walked forward and one of them made like a growling noise at him basically tell him don't come any closer and so he backed off and he, and he also said that every time he packed a gun he never saw him but if he never when he didn't take his gun is when he saw him so he he his theory was too that they can sense or feel or smell or, or whatever maybe the gunpowder or the you know something was different and so they didn't come around but when he didn't have his gun he would see him hmm. yeah paul was a police officer for a while wasn't he um ooh. no he worked for the uh forestry department okay, okay. and uh he had uh oh i don't he wasn't in the uh, law part of it he was just he oversaw the the management of the watershed okay but i got uh one book the evidence of bigfoot and other man beast bigfoot of the blues by vance orchard uh where bigfoot walks by robert michael Pyle. the walla walla bigfoot by vance orchard and then my new the new book i've got is uh the paul freeman bigfoot files oh wow so i mean i've got a a good collection that my wife and i have collected over the years of of the bigfoot books um you know, you know i gotta tell you like i said brian and i've been coming out there for quite a while and i I get more excitement or just as much excitement trekking through the Blue Mountains than I do like the Cascades over there toward Portland. I mean, we like to stop and, and hike here and there, but the Blue Mountains, there's something about them. There's, it's different. They got a lot of cool trails. Um, South Fork Trail, I remember that one was a really cool one. Oh, the, the South Fork of the Walla Walla River? Yeah. You kind of had to climb a, over a little bit of rock area to get to the main trail because it got washed out. It was kind of yep, cool. Yep. Yeah. It, it's been washed out twice now. So it's a little harder to get to. They've talked several times about uh, trying to redo some of it. We go camping up there a lot on that South Fork. There's a, a campground called Harris Park, right? Kind of right before you get to the uh hiking trail and so we go camping up there probably four or five times a year during the summer and it the blue mountains are different than the cascades it uh i think it's because there's not a lot there's a lot less activity in the blues i think it's spread out more where there's more a lot more area that's just secluded and it's more dry out there too you know what i'm saying i right. mean and it's yeah. not as populated out there as it right. is towards correct it's not as populated um you know you do have from oregon you have elgin um you have enterprise joseph uh uh, uh the city of wallawa and so you got small towns up through that area uh to up to by wallawa lake and that's where we would do a lot of our backpacking is up in the wallawa lake area and uh you know when we went backpacking we saw a lot of deer in the morning and stuff but you know we never saw cougars we never saw bears but you know they're there right yeah i mean they're not going to just jump out and say, Hey, here I am. You know, I mean, yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
I mean, people think that Bigfoot are just walking around everywhere. It's not necessarily true. They yeah, do, no. I think they do come down from the Blue Mountains. Though. That's the thing that intrigues me about the Blues. I think a lot of things, I think they come down, they've been seen in like Pilot Rock and areas like that. And, and yes, you know, yes. Like, but if you look at that, there's a river system that comes down to those towns and cities. Like they follow that thing. Yeah. They hidden within that. Uh, well, yeah, because even here in Walla Walla, we've actually had a black bear in the middle of town at, at the park. Uh, there's a town a little north of Walla Walla called Wakesburg. They've had a black bear in the cemetery. Hmm. You know, and Dayton, I believe Dayton, they've, uh, I know of two times that they've had a mountain lion down in the Dayton area that they told people to be careful and watch out for because it was in the in town and all of these areas have streams and and water that flow down out of the blues and it just makes a perfect natural habitat you know yeah i, I see them coming more down during the winter because the upper upper part of the blues it can snow pretty heavily and stuff and everything. So the food sources slowly come down. And so I, I think that's why you have more, I don't know, more opportunity or more deals that you hear uh, of sightings in the blues. Let's talk about the watershed for a second. I've never really fully understood the watershed. I know it's an area between Washington and Oregon there at the, at the um, border and it kind of drifts down toward Tollgate area, but what is a yes. watershed? Explain that. Okay. To me. It's okay. It, the watershed is the main water source for Walla Walla area. It's, it's uh, a lot of uh, it's the, uh, the Walla Walla river basin or uh south and north fork area it's the mill creek uh water area and if you go up mill creek road it does come to a place to where it's called tiger canyon and the road splits off at that point to where you can go up tiger canyon and the water and the road spears off to the left and it's fenced off and that goes into the watershed. The watershed is a protected area that they don't allow vehicles. You're not allowed to go hiking in that area uh, that protects the water source for the city. And so that's what the watershed is. It's just the area in the mountains that feed most of the streams that come through town uh, that feeds the Walla Walla River, feeds the Mill Creek, which is the main water source for Walla Walla, that uh, they actually have, I believe, up Mill Creek, they have an area to where it actually feeds into the water system. They, they uh, chlorinate the water and they clean, and they've got cleaners, screens that help keep the water clean that flows into the city water source yeah, and that's been, and that's where paul freeman used to work was up in that watershed yep i've been up and down mill creek road a lot of times i know exactly what you're talking about because i've read about that and um went there several times to hopefully see a bigfoot or something like that yeah so yeah I, I tiger creek road i think i've been around that area on that trail yeah something. that takes that takes you far farther up in the blues mm -hmm. yeah so there's a lot of um but do, don't get don't get anybody wrong i mean it's still wilderness up there i mean you talk about it's different but you can get up there i mean it's there's a lot of a lot of wilderness and tree trees up there and perfect places to hide and i'm guessing i'm guessing there's probably a lot of cave systems up there too that that we don't know about there could be i mean there there's got to be some because it's just you think of the area that it is there's got to be caves and stuff that there's got to be that covers and stuff so 
What are your thoughts about Bigfoot? I mean, do you think, I mean, obviously they're, do you think they hang around the watershed because it's it's easy it's it's protected first of all right and a lot of people don't get to go Correct. in there a Correct. lot of a lot of animals and deer probably go there for food source Correct. and water i mean it's it's kind of like more oh yeah it's else. a it's a natural habitat for for animals and, and you don't have you you don't have the people that are allowed in it so you don't have a lot of traffic from hikers campers you don't have that up there. It's it's off limits. And so even going up Mill Creek and going up Tiger Canyon, um, you know, there there's cabins quite a ways up of people that live up there year round. But you get farther up out of Tiger on Tiger Canyon and you know, you go for hours and hours and hours or all day and not see anybody. And so my, my thought and my wife's thought is we hope they never, ever find one alive. Because if they ever do, the scientists are going to tear it to pieces. And it's like, to me, I, my wish is maybe somebody could come across a partial skeleton with some of the hair, you know, that there's no other explanation for it. And because one, I, I, I know some places that have outlawed the hunting of Sasquatch that I've heard of. And to me, that would be ideal for Washington and Oregon and Idaho to all say, hey, even though we don't know it exists 100%, there is something out here. Let's just make it a law to protect it so nobody's going out and trying to kill it. And I, I always think, you know, every once in a while, you, you do come across a bear carcass. Somebody that's backpacks a lot more than I did you know, might, might come across a dead bear or the remains of a dead bear. To me, that's, that would be ideal is to have somebody come across uh, the remains or partial remains of a Sasquatch. But I think like Paul Freeman felt that they were in family groups that maybe they do kind of hide their, their, the ones that have died that maybe they kind of kind of hide them to where you just don't you don't find them i mean it's rare to come across the bear carcass because nature tears it apart naturally it decays the weather gets to it other animals get to it the insects get to it so it breaks down very quickly and I think that's the that's the deal with Sasquatch. I think it just, I think in some ways they might kind of hide or, or or do something with the 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 ones that passed away, and then nature takes takes over and it just breaks down quick. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely think that there's families they live in they live in a tribe maybe, um, and they take care of each other obviously but if you ask somebody okay let's let's look at it like this if you ask anyone do mountain lions exist they're gonna say yes right yes now you ask how many people in their lives have ever seen a mountain lion out in the wilderness very few Less i mean we have, have claim to seen bigfoot i guarantee yeah you that. We, we have seen them up the south fork have you uh hiking on the trail uh, uh past terrace park uh, we were hiking one year with our kids. Our kids were little at the time. And we, we heard this noise up above us, up on the rocks. And we looked back and up on this rock cliff were two cougars laying on the rock. And they were just looking down at the path that all, that all these people, all of the, everybody was hiking on. And it's like, 
there's two cougars. And it's like, how many times have we been up here? And we've never seen cougars up here. But we know they're there. Are you talking about on the South Fork Trail? Is that the yes. trail that you're talking about? Yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. I know that, that cliff that you're talking about because I went there a long time ago, and my wife actually went out to Oregon with me once, and we, we hiked that trail. I said this would be a perfect place for a mountain lion to attack somebody. It, yeah, it's it's a rock ledge that Jump hangs right, right over the trail. You never yeah, and you never sweet. see them. But we were far enough up the trail that when we looked back, you can see on top of that rock shelf. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they were there. They were just laying there, just watching everybody go by. And it's like, oh crap! It's like, okay, kids, you stay between mom and me. And I had my, I had a little pocket knife at the time and I got it out and opened it up and I just carried it. And it's like, okay, I'm going to put myself in front of my kids. Go for the eyes. You know, and I've got my little knife and I'm going for the face. I'm going for the eyes. And it's like, okay. <laughs> it's like, okay, I just got a little pocket knife. It's got claws. <laughs> I heard somebody say one time, and I don't know if this is true or not, but like with an alligator or a shark or something like that, not a shark, but an alligator or like a mountain lion or something like that, uh, this sounds crazy, and I probably will edit this out, but if you actually were to stick your fist and arm down their throat, yeah. they would they would totally like leave you like, no, I can't breathe, I can't, this is not right, you know. Well, especially if you, if you could grab onto the tongue. Something. That you can and and guys, it, you guys are crazy. You put it down deep enough, you can cause it the the choking aspect, mm -hmm. the gag, yeah, the if, gagging. You know. Yeah, if you're gonna bite me, let me stick my fist down your throat and, and yeah, make that reflex. Just you know, I don't know. I could be full of crap, but I've I've heard that two years ago. Or a dog attack. If a dog ever attacked me, I'd stick my fist down his throat. What's he gonna do? He's gonna, he's yeah. gonna choke, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know. But depends on the dog. You might have a dog with a big enough mouth. <laughs> That's true. Might work on a Bigfoot too. You never know. You could just put. That you never in. know. You never know. <laughs> Somebody tried to put their fist in my mouth. I choke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So are you still getting out there? You say you see guys are still camping when you can, and uh... yeah, we camp we when we can. Since my accident, I have I, I've had a hard time uh, camping. Uh, I just I get uh, kind of panic attacks or anxiety attacks since my accident, and so um, I haven't gone as much. My wife and our daughter in law have actually gone. My wife or my son and I will drive up the trailer, get it all hooked up, get the campsite all set up. And then my wife and daughter-in-law would go up and stay for the weekend. And uh, so we got binoculars and stuff. So when we're sitting at the campsite, we're scanning the hillsides back and forth, just kind of watching, just, you know, in hopes of maybe seeing something move that catches our eye or something. Well, yeah, you know you live in the number one state for Bigfoot sightings, so. Yeah. And surprisingly, well, I think, Oregon is not number two. I'm surprised, too, but you go to central central Oregon and stuff, it's all pretty dry, and it's really yeah. open. Yeah. And so unless you're right on the west coast in the Cascade Range, you don't have a lot of the mountain area or, or the – northeastern corner of Oregon where the blues are because you got the blue uh what they consider the blue mountain range the Wallawa uh Wallawa mountain range uh and or the Umatilla mountain range that I mean all three of those are all connected together they're all part of the Rocky Mountain range okay and so but it's just some areas are there's more people living, and then a lot of areas where you don't have anybody living. I tell you what, I'd love to get up there and have a cabin out in, in the middle of nowhere and just yeah. place to go or live there. Oh, that would be ideal. Anywhere. That would be ideal. 
It is beautiful. And driving up Mill Creek Road, there's an area where like the river flows beside the road and it's just, you start yep. getting into the pines and all that. And it's just so, oh, so yeah. awesome and cool. Yeah. yeah. Cause you, you go at Mill Creek and I mean, you, you maybe go five miles outside of town up Mill Creek and you're in the mountains. You, you've got the pine trees, you got the cedar trees you, and Mill Creek's like there along the road and stuff. And, you know, it, it's it's a nice area, and there's there's a lot of people that live up Mill Creek that when the when they had the Bigfoot uh, prints through the farmer's field, they uh, a lot of people denied it. They're all this is all fake. Somebody did it. And it's like okay, I can see it. They live up here. They don't want to believe that it exists because it scares them. It's like, why, you know, that. living up there, you don't want to believe something that big other than a, uh, than a black bear lives up there. And I think that scares, that idea scares people. Yeah, I never thought about that. Very true. Because I know when Paul Freeman was working in the watershed, he lost his job because he wouldn't denounce what he saw. Oh. They want they wanted him to denounce what he saw that he must have misjudged it. He made it up or whatever that he didn't see what he said he saw, and uh, he lost his job that because he wouldn't wouldn't change wouldn't change his mind. I never thought about this, but do you think there's you know how like when people come across weird Bigfoot situations or something, maybe one gets hit by a vehicle or something like that, or something weird happens. Do you think there's government agencies just around and waiting in the areas where Bigfoot are known to be? Like maybe there's government agencies around the Blue Mountains and maybe there's government agencies around just the Cascades and the Pacific Northwest, just ready to jump and be there in case someone hit a Bigfoot or him forbid, you know, a semi accident or something like that. I, I think it's possible that they want to probably try to keep it under wraps. They don't want people. I mean, that's the part of the way I feel. It's like, even if, even though I saw it and I, and I tell people I saw it, I tell them approximately where I saw it. I tell them approximately what time of year I saw it, but it's like, I tell them the, with the idea of you can believe me or you can't, if you don't want to, that's your choice. But I saw what I saw and nobody can change my mind about it. And that was Paul Freeman. He saw what he saw. He tracked what he tracked. He kept records. I actually, I bought, I bought maps of the mountain area that I was going to uh, take. We had a, a store for a while. Uh, two guys here locally opened it up. They had all Bigfoot uh, information. They had some some of the old maps that Paul Freeman had. Uh, they know his son, and I guess his son gave him copies or gave him some of the maps that showed where his dad tracked him at, the time of year they were at, um, how many he saw, that I was going to copy some of that onto my maps but then COVID hit and their store couldn't survive and they ended up closing and it's like oh damn I bought my maps and I wanted to copy some of the stuff what Paul Freeman had so I could go up in that time of year and that time, what time of day I mean he had such detail on the maps that you could almost track it that he, he, he even felt that, uh, they migrated during the time of year through, through the mountains. I was going to ask you that question. Do you think they hibernate? Do you think they stay in the blues all year long or where do you think they go if they don't? No, I, th I think they, they stay in the blues, but I think they just kind of migrate to area to area that, you know, Unless they're like a, a good area, like a water, like what we have up Mill Creek, you got the watershed, so you don't have, uh, 
80 people all, all throughout the entire year. Maybe one guy that goes up and checks checks the watershed for, for stuff that kind of like what Paul Freeman did, and that's a safe area for him. It's protected. It's 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 you know it's it's closed off to the public. So it's a protected uh, area for wildlife completely. So I don't I don't think they migrate out of the area. I think they just kind of migrate through the blues or through the Rockies. Uh, different time of the year, you'll see. You know, you might see them here. You might have more activity down here. And so I, I, I kind of think what Paul Freeman did is they kind of migrated through the area during the time of year. Just kind of follow the, the warmth maybe a little bit more. The yeah, I think so. That during the winter the time, the, yeah, the winter time, they follow the, the food source. And I, I think they just kind of migrate with the food source throughout the, throughout the area. How many uh, Bigfoot would you say, if you had to guess, what do you think the population would be in the Blue Mountains? Have you any idea? Oh, wow. That would be a hard one. I mean, I would say, gosh, in the depending on this, the area, I mean, if I'm thinking out of the Walla Walla area, I would say maybe five, maybe just a handful. I don't think they're heavily populated. I think they're very s sparse. You know, you, you think of uh, some of the wildlife, you know, throughout the whole world that the male, the male of the species is off by themselves most of the time until it's time for mating. And then they go hunting for the females and then, then they mate and then they're off again by themselves. And I, I think some ways, you know, maybe Sasquatch is the kind of the same way, you know, they might run in, in, in family groups or you might see them in family groups at a, a, a certain time or a certain uh, area just because of that's the way they're traveling or something. But I think maybe mostly they're just kind of kind of off by themselves. So you're saying that. The male Bigfoots are like players or something like that. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> no, but you think you think of some of some of the the natural, you know, bears and stuff. They, I mean, they don't stay in family groups. Ba bears go off by themselves during, and then during mating season, they hook up, and they mate, they split up, and they go their separate ways. The female bear has the cub. You don't have the male bear around that during that time. And so the only time you see the male male bears there is during during mating season. When you saw this thing walk by the window and did yeah. you feel like it was more of an animal or was it more like a maybe a human or a tribal kind of creature or something like that or Yeah, it was definitely I mean, it walked upright, and you can tell. It turned like a human would turn to walk off. Uh, it, it, it was definitely uh, more human than I – to me, it would seem more human than, than animal. I think it was curious why it stopped and looked in. I think it was more curious because of the light. We had all the lights on in the cabin, so the the glass of the, the the windows or whatever was all lit up. The deck was lit up. So I mean, I think I think just I think at times it's more is might be more curious of of us. That that's why maybe at, you know in certain situations people see them in areas that. Well, they're maybe they're curious about us looking at them or something. Well, yeah, if they're walking around looking in windows, I mean, obviously they are seeing us more than we're seeing them. I think, honestly, yeah. you know, they probably know more about us than we know about them. To be, to be could true. be. But, but when you do see it, it changes your life. It's it's it it changes you. 
How does it, it just, change you? Tell us, tell us how you look I, at life now. I'm, I think I'm more open to things than what I used to be. Uh, believing of things that, okay, well, maybe this is possible. Maybe, maybe what they're saying is possible of this or, uh, my wife always gives me a bad time. She goes, Oh, you believe in aliens and all that stuff. And it's like, well, I don't know if I believe in aliens, but I do believe there's got to be something else out there. And you you look at scientists and they t say how much of the oceans they've they've discovered, you know, that what was it only like 2% is what they say that we've actually have have uh search through or whatever that two percent is what we know and, and then got 98 percent that you're still unknown and so who, who's to say that you know in the our mountains there aren't more stuff out there that you know we just don't know about when you got when you got natural caves or even old mining caves that have been uh abandoned for 20 30 years Who's to say something hasn't found it and use it for their to get out of the weather and, you know, for protection from weather and stuff. Who's to say that's not possible. Yeah. I mean, you talk about the Indians, you know, and they, they always talk about these creatures and, you know, America, as far as the, the Eastern civilization coming over and populizing over here, you talk about Europe and whatever, everyone kind of come over here and claim their, their stake. But really, I mean, we're not that old of a country as far as technology and, and, and wisdom goes, as far as what goes on here, 250, 270 years is not enough time not long at all to dig into what really is going on in this world, even, in, even in this country, in this area. I mean, there could be things here that just, you know, we just don't know about. And you talk about the ocean, absolutely and and why are we only discovered two or even ten percent of the ocean why aren't we trying to discover more exactly which, which makes me ask the question maybe we aren't supposed to or maybe they are not telling us what you know that could be too i mean i think at times i think government maybe know more than what they tell us just because if we knew we probably go off on our on ourselves and hey we're gonna go hunt this thing down and, and kill it so it's not out there to, to harm anybody or do anything and it's like sometimes we're the worst people it's not the animals that are causing the problem it's the people causing the problems and you when you get to areas that more and more people are moving into the mountains and doing stuff in the mountains then you might have a little bit more activity. People might see them a little bit more just because they're moved into that area. But it's we're coming across their paths. It's not them coming across us. We're coming across them. Yeah, we're the destructive ones, aren't we? At this point, yeah. Unfortunately. And and when when you say about the natives, I mean, you look at history and, and you look at the native history and they have talked about Sasquatch and Bigfoot and, you know, all the other names that they have for it throughout their history of their tribes that go back more than 250 years of the U.S. They go back 300, 400, 500 years of the belief and their people have seen them. Their people have heard them and their people have worshipped them and so it's like you know they've been here around longer than we have and they have it in their history and so it's like that's anywhere you go alaska russia you you go to the native people and the native people have, have the stories that go back hundreds of years and in, in modern day, we think, oh, no, that can't exist. It'd be found out. Well, not necessarily. Yeah, as far advanced as we are, we really don't understand 
the world we live in. No, we don't. We don't understand what how nature, you know, can hide things. We don't understand how nature can oh all of a sudden oh we come across this and oh it's a new discovery no it's been around here for thousands thousands of years it's just yeah it's just now we're the modern man has finally discovered it but it's been here long before him yep there's a lot of things out there too that we don't know about and probably never will well, steve we want to thank you for being with us tonight man it was great having you on the show well, I thank you. Yeah. I, you know, I came across you guys on Facebook, and it was like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate you reaching out Thanks, to us. Yeah, man. we appreciate it. Yeah, if you're, uh, do you ever get down to Pendleton area at all, or? Yeah, we go, uh, we go to Pendleton ever so often. Do you? Okay. Well, next time we're out there, maybe we'll get get a hold of you. Maybe we can meet up and say hello or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right. Well, if you get back out there which I'm sure you will. Maybe you won't. I don't know. But if you see something. Yeah, I will. I, I, I plan. I, my wife knows. Actually, my wife's in the insurance business. And I believe the two guys that had the Bigfoot store here in town, I believe she does might do their insurance. Okay. And so I'll have, to, I'll have to ask her to try to put me in con contact with them because I do know they still go out on like Saturdays or Sunday and they go up in the blues and they just kind of go up and you know pick an area or whatever and sit and just listen and watch and and so it's like I told my wife eventually I need to kind of get my stuff together and kind of just go try to go up with them and I thought about yeah. a couple times just taking my truck and going up myself and yeah. saying hey I'm gonna go up myself so there's a st these guys have a Bigfoot store in Walla Walla you said Used to. Oh, you no, they used to, uh, COVID. Uh, they had to close down during COVID because yeah. they didn't. Couldn't, they couldn't make enough. I understand. Yeah, COVID. Yeah, All right, COVID Steve, didn't help anybody. <laughs> no, it didn't. Well, brother, you have a good one, uh, and we'll be in touch. If you see something, get a hold of us, man. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you take yeah, a yeah, picture? Yeah, just uh, drop drop a line, and uh, we'll get together. Definitely. Can you take a picture of that footprint that you have and send it to us in an email or something like that? And we can put it on yeah. the group page. Yeah, I'll try doing that. All right, cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right, All right man. Well, great talking to you again, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right, All see right you, Steve. Thanks. Bye.